Your landing in Colombo and probably I convinced you to spend one or two days here, but the big question is, where to next? The southern part of Sri Lanka will be one of your best options. Our adventure continues with Gale City. In this video you'll discover the mystery and beauty of the old city of Gale, together with its most wildest and remote beaches from Talpe. Feeding giant turtles and staying in a hut on the ocean are just some of the highlights of the video. Today all roads lead to the southern part of Sri Lanka. After two days spent in Colombo we decided to drive towards Gale. I hope you didn't miss our previous video where we answered if it's worth visiting Colombo. The challenge for today's video is to visit Gale for a couple of hours and then spend the night in our bucket list accommodation, a beach hut in Talpe. We were happy to find a reliable car to rent from Ameri rent a car a company which we recommend because we didn't face any issues. They might be a bit more expensive than others, but they have good cars and they treat their customers well. Our Perro do Abeza, a car from 2019, didn't disappoint us. It was the first time I have ever heard about this type of car. From Colombo to Gale, you'll make around 2 hours on the expressway, a smooth road where you can drive with a speed limit of 110 km per hour. The best part is that slow vehicles such as tuk-tuks are not allowed here. We are currently driving on a highway uh, to Gale, but before we were to Colombo because we had to pick up the car and it's been crazy. So the traffic in Colombo is really crazy and you have to be very careful because there are a lot of motorbikes, tuk-tuks, and they are in your right, in your left, like everywhere, so you need to be very careful. But here we are, so Adrian. Yeah. Yes, for 10,000 rupiah you can rent this Perodua, Beza. very nice car. Yeah, we wanted actually a small car, but they didn't have anything else available at this point. On our way we saw just some peacock signs and a cow jumping on the road, probably wanted to make some powdered milk. We arrived in Gale in the middle of the day and parked the car in the old port. I was telling you last time that 98% of you that are watching my videos didn't subscribe to my channel and now the percentage decreased to 95%. I know that we can do better than this. We are now exploring Gale, we are going to the lighthouse, the port and uh, let's see what other things we can discover here. First impression was that the city is pretty quiet but I guess any city will feel quiet after coming from Colombo. But seriously, it cannot be associated with Colombo. Compared to the crazy traffic from Colombo, you'll find just a few cars in the old port. Aurora Bastion. Let's discover it. Here it's a large house, a large cannon. Protecting Sri Lanka. Pretty chill until now, Gale. <laughs> Comparing with Colombo. It's really hot today. Hot and humid. humid yeah. We read that there are 42 degrees in the air. So heavy day today. Ooh. Let's see, we have five objectives to visit here in Gale and then we will go to our accommodation in Unabatuna. Yes. Unabatuna. We saw for the first time in Sri Lanka plenty of tourists, concluding that Colombo was not the first choice for tourists. We saw in Gale now uh, how many tourists we saw in two days in Colombo. We've reached the famous lighthouse. The Gale Lighthouse is Sri Lanka's oldest light station. You'll easily spot it within the walls of the ancient Gale Fort. Opposite to Gale Lighthouse, the Meran Mosque or Meran Majik is a beautifully crafted piece of architecture that lies within the ramparts of the Gale Fort. 
serving the majority Muslim population of the city. Meran Mosque was built in 1904 on the site of a Portuguese Catholic church. The numerals painted on the front wall of the mosque state the year 1325, which supports the notion that a prayer space existed here before the 20th century. The mosque is built facing the direction of Mecca, Islam's holiest city, using local materials and the skills of local stone masons and carvers. There is a clear blend of Dutch influenced design and it blends well with the surrounding architecture of the fort. The interior is a delight to explore, with dappled sunlight beaming into high ceiling rooms through beautiful panes of stained glass windows. Italian pattern tiles line the floors and chandeliers hang from above. There is a large central prayer space featuring high windows, a sculpted arch and a small well-maintained lawn outside the mosque where worshippers congregate and relax between prayer times. We then walked along the fort and enjoyed the noisy ocean and the architecture of the fortified walls. We are enjoying the breeze right uh, behind me is the lighthouse. We visited the mosque and now we are walking on uh, the defensive walls of Gale. In the 16th century, Gale was the main port of the island. Gale reached the height of its development in the 18th century during the Dutch colonial period. Gale is the best example of a fortified city built by the Portuguese in the South Asia, showing the interaction between Portuguese architectural styles and native traditions. The city was extensively fortified by the Dutch during the 17th century. The Gale Fort is a World Heritage Site and is the largest remaining fortress in Asia built by the Europeans. Europeans. On 26 December 2004, the city was devastated by a massive tsunami caused by an earthquake. It was a bit difficult to visit as the temperature rised at more than 35 degrees Celsius. We deep dive into the fort and we reached to a beautiful temple called Sri Sudaramalaya. With an impressive pagoda in front, you'll surely not miss it. It includes a large reclining Buddha statue and a small stupa, which is a semi-circular structure containing many artifacts related to the Buddhist religion, dating back to 1889. The temple has an unusual design including a bell that may indicate the presence of a church at one time. This temple is visited by many locals and tourists from all around the world due to its religious, cultural and architectural importance. Best attraction in Gale so far. We kept visiting Gale and saw some boys launching their kites, which I've seen is a trend in Sri Lanka. Others were playing cricket, but the interesting thing was the creature nearby digging for food. I would say it's a monitor lizard. We saw plenty of these lizards in Sri Lanka, but always from the distance. Ladies, I bet you'll not be happy to meet such huge lizards. The good thing is that they run away if you're getting closer, but it's better to keep a safe distance. Not sure if there is somebody willing to meet these creatures from a close distance. Gale Fort Clock Tower is a popular landmark and overlooks the central moon bastion, on the site of the former guard room. The clock tower was constructed in 1883, paid with public subscription by the people of Gale. Built in the 16th century by the Portuguese, the Gale Fort was a strategic fortress that protected the commercial activity of Gale from external powers. It was however in the 17th century Dutch era that the fort took a shape that we are familiar with it today, with fortified positions known as bastions that still stand as testament to colonial influence and design. When the British conquered the city, the fort was further fortified and today there are 14 bastions, all of which once played a major role in defending the port of Gale from conquests. The Grote Kirk or Dutch Reformed Church is situated near the entrance of the fort. The church was built by the Dutch in 1755 and is one of the oldest Protestant church still in use in the country. After all the visiting in this extreme heat, we found the best ice cream in Sri Lanka called Isle of Gelato. The weather was so hot and humid that we needed to cool down our engines. It was delicious. With 40 degrees, an ice cream is all you want.
We loved the peace and quiet on the streets and wanted to stay longer, but it was almost sunset and we needed to reach Una Vatuna for our next accommodation at Galavata Beach Resort. After a 15 minutes drive, we arrived at Galavata. We are checking in. We wanted so much to mark a wish off our bucket list that we booked a night in a hut right near the ocean. We were warmly welcomed with watermelon drinks and with a lot of smiles. As it was getting dark, we enjoyed a romantic walk on the beach right before dinner. By the way, in Sri Lanka, all year round, the sunset is around 6 pm. Not many things to do after it gets dark, so our strategy was to sleep early and wake up early so that we'll enjoy more of the daylight. Coming back to our sunset, the colors were unbelievable. We just arrived here at the Turtle Beach and we are going to see now if there are indeed any turtles around here. And the sunset! And the sunset, yeah, we almost run for a beautiful sunset. We keep hoping. There are big waves today, so maybe that's why. No turtles today. Maybe tomorrow morning. After we took our vitamin C, we ordered dinner and we were surprised to have it served on our porch. We ordered chicken and fish curry. The portions were enormous and we shared the leftovers with their cute little dog. In the night there were heavy thunderstorms and it was not necessarily a good idea to be near the ocean at that time. But we survived, sacrificing just the sleep of Laura. On the other hand, I slept like a baby, with my earplugs on. We woke up at 6 am with the sun drying the remains of the storm. It was a huge storm last night and we barely slept something, but it was a hell of experience. <laughs> We slept here with thunderstorms raining. We thought that it will move our house. I recommend you to take earplugs with you because if it's not the noise of the ocean, the reptiles and insect sound will surely keep you awake. It was also the perfect moment to exercise my drone skills. We then had few walks on the beach checking for huge turtles but without luck. My lovely Laura didn't sleep a second last night. There were storms, there were waves, there were chipmunks, there were every reason to not sleep a bit last night. Fortunately for me, we, I had uh, earplugs and I slept a lot and I am fresh. Hey, cute little dog. You had some too much chicken curry last night. Then we ate a weighted delicious breakfast with plenty of traditional foods such as hoppers, pol sambol, omelette and curry. After breakfast it was time to enjoy the surroundings. It's now time to go to the beach and enjoy the ocean. Hopefully we will see also turtles. But wait, a turtle arrives at the shore. We are going to see the turtles. Another perfect moment to mark something off the bucket list. A local saw our interest for turtles and sold us a bag of seaweeds with an overprice of $3. Not that I'm an expert on how much it values a bag of seaweeds. We had the time of our lives. And that's all that matters. It was a unique and incredible experience to feed the giant turtles in its natural habitat. Feeding the turtles in Unabatuna! <laughs> This experience will definitely remain one of the highlights of our trip. So, how was the experience to feed the turtles? Wow, it was amazing. It was a giant turtle. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, a man gave us seaweed and we feed the turtle. It was so huge, I've never seen so big turtle ever in my life. After such an amazing experience at Galavata, in just one day, it was that time again to pack our bags and leave. Amazing place in Unavatuna, Galavata Resort, incredible, it's on the beach, food is awesome and the people are really friendly and helpful. 
definitely we will come back here. We'll not spill the beans, but I can tell you that we'll remain on the southern part of Sri Lanka, at least for the next two days. I bet you've enjoyed our Sri Lankan experience. And if so, please subscribe to our channel, like the video and maybe share it with a friend that will find it fun. It was again a great pleasure to meet you through my video, dear friend. Until next video, goodbye for now.